Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Beacon Pines, but cold. It's it's time for more cold. I mean, more Beacon Pines. On Playframe. You're... <laughs> I love how excited you are to play more of this every single time we sit down to record more of it. I am as I'm well. Sorry. I just I'm, I love your enthusiasm. Wait, go investigate the place where our house should be. There's tire tracks there. Ooh, there are, aren't they? Hmm. Dang it. It does look like tire tracks. Oh, uh, I need to know about this place. I don't think there are any interactables. No. Okay. Oh my goodness. But your dad's gravestone was there and everything. Like, there are some things definitely different. Mm -hmm. Not all the buildings are the same. Yeah, like I think we noticed last week. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all of things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. I'm pretty sure this was at the end of the last episode, but it whenever was. you load back in, some stuff repeats. Just yeah. to, which I actually kind of appreciate just to... Kind of reground you? Yeah, there seem to be like specific checkpoints that they drop you in at where if you load back in within a certain framework, the, le the next few lines you hear will cue you back into where you were before, which is really smart. It is, yeah. Ah, uh, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncreed is an alien. <laughs> Rolo. Stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into a Beacon Pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. Yes, we should. I want to explore. Wait, explore those barrels. The barrels, you say? Oh, these, yes. Yeah. Good call. The ones that have skull and crossbones on them. I Wait, feel like... stop talking like... <laughs> stop <laughs> talking like Beck. Sorry. I just like her voice. You can keep talking like Beck if you like to. Like forever? I mean, if you want to. <laughs> to the corner to the frozen town square. They spotted <gasps> Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Oh boy. Well, we did it. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. Gran stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you have doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've been, you've done, you and your co-conspirators. Gran, what's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncreed turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rollo and Beck held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anger. Wait a second. His voice hardened. Maybe That's that is our mom. Huh. She seems a little old for it, although Time aging things. is definitely a thing that our stuff is, uh... <laughs> yeah! That, uh, this stuff is messing with, so yeah, I, that... Oh, you could be onto something man. there, actually. You might How be onto bad something. that would hurt. How bad that would hurt. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. 
Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Oh, oh good, we get to screw it up. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, <laughs> Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. And in the stillness, he began to... Oh, good, one option. Oh. Boy, I hope it's the right one. <laughs> it's always the and right in one. in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This'll all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll all see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. Oh boy. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to- Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place, forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. <laughs> so now I think it might be time to go back to the other branch and see what we can suss out. Learn, yeah, yeah. Because we've really got one option here. Just the one, huh? And it's this one. Wow, that's a ways back. It sure so is. So on this path, we pushed Iggy instead of letting um, letting Beck do the fighting or joking around. Yeah, like the the branch started where we either decided to be chill or a little shit with Roxy. Mm -hmm. uh, it resulted in us not having Rolo there, but we did meet Beck and at this point whether we uh, I think It was Beck's choice to defuse the situation. That one leads to here where Nuncreed stops us. Right. The other one where we push... Uh, where what, we push Iggy. Where we push Iggy leads to this situation where we get uh, cornered by the clipboards up here. Yep, yep. And instead of fighting, which didn't make a lot of sense given our weaponry available, we're going to run instead. Listen, Rolo had just upgraded the base. That's true. And there was like a whole passcode and everything where you had to throw trash at a target. Right? Which... Maybe he hadn't gotten that part done, but still. And even so, it doesn't work great as a passcode if you think about it, but is still very, very inventive, and I <laughs> applaud him for it. <laughs> All right. This time, 
We must flight. Yes. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. Oh boy. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Nice. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr, we'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. <laughs> Come on, Iggy. See ya, jerks. Fine. We know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Hmm. Chapter 5 Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed oh. across the snowy terrain. Huh. Okay, that's very close. That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost him. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the winter wonderland? All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Let's see if there's anything... Oh. Luca? Luca, are you there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. It's that bozo cur. Oh. Oh. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous things in the woods is you. He speaks. The young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy. You Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. We gotta keep moving. Hmm. Man. Okay. We should probably check the pneumatic tunnel. Just oh, yeah. In case. A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface. A manhole cover? If it is, I've never seen one like it. Hmm. Okay. Really wanting to learn oh. a new action. Um, um, yeah, I have no idea who... What's the readout? And who will these two be? I don't know. Sitting just above 258 Kelvin. That's a bit down from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh, still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, Relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I don't know as if we know them. We may not. What's all this? Hard to say with all this snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out letters under there. What town could this even be? There couldn't be another town this deep into Weep Wood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure <laughs> out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. Throw a snowball at it. Hmm. 
maybe our little friends here don't know how to make a snowball. In situations such as these, I find it best to chuck stuff first and ask questions second. <laughs> um, sure, but what do we chuck? Oh, well, okay. there we are. Perfect. Oh boy. The boys stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read, Welcome to Beacon Pines. This doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. There's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. <laughs> the puddle we fought at before. It was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. You think it's related? What the hell's going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. I like our optimism. Mm-hmm. Can I look at these yet? Yes! This stuff look familiar to you? It looks like the barrel near the puddle I, uh... shoved me into, yeah. Oh boy, back away, Luca. <laughs> Don't let Iggy push you in. Ooh. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know... <laughs> Swim I was run. Say, fish don't run, Luca. <laughs> the crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town's destroyed, and everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Aww. Iggy, it's going to be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Aww. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. You should have at least gone inside a building and sat on not snow. Yeah. The way the snow covered everything over is kind of common. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had time to say it, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, it's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second... Stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my temper. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. <laughs> but that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. And that's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. Geez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into fights? Iggy shrugged. It's something to do. <laughs> you're an asshole because you're bored? 
Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Rollo are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Dinky now wept openly. Aww. Perfect little Luca Van Horn. With his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet. Even she already likes you. Aww. You have Tish. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Luca gave yep. a warm chuckle. I get that impression. Iggy cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. <sighs> it must be raining out here. <laughs> Definitely. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all this. Luca's eyelids began to slowly drift shut. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Hmm? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. Oh my gosh. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Mm. Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Oof. Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. No, no, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt, we can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do, just watch? There's a sickness in this town and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Mm -hmm. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? 
both drop to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, Buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca <laughs> hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. <laughs> Get your hands off me! Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. <laughs> Just what do you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. <sighs> you two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep, minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you... When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. <laughs> you big-headed... Scarfy necked <laughs> furball. Mm hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a Nat and buzz off? <laughs> Finally, ammunition. <laughs> Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait. Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are? You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must also know where they are. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Iggy turned sharply <laughs> and began to stomp off. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay. Open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold, until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwood. Or we teleported to some alternate universe. Or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kara and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original 
true Beacon Pines. Hey, you were right. Maybe. We still don't know. I might have gotten some parts wrong. You both grew up here. But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You'd need a, a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed. To pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which would... That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so. Unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tra tapestry... Well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity. A revulsion, even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out rough edges, keeping us sane. Luca and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all, and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty. The best one can do is uncover... Nat narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered... The Source. Why do you say the Source like that? Why indeed. Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. <laughs> it's all ridiculous. There, there's no way they could... He looked down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this really is home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy! It's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. Chapter 6 The Source Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy, it all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Mm. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard. A headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone, in the snow. Mm. Dad, I'm so sorry. They've ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly... They heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. Uh-oh. Hide. We gotta hide. Two fifty-nine K. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said two fifty-nine. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? Oh, that's a good idea. 
We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's a grave of someone with a family. The people who love them would never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey! Don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> Shimmy. Haha, <laughs> weirdo. I get the feeling there's gonna be two people we know. Maybe. Or two people from around. I don't know. Here, I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Peggy gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Who's any of this helping? Mm. What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover. Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. L Luca Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Kerr and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a, a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. <laughs> if it's too big to snatch, we smash it. <laughs> and what if it's too big to smash? Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. You have to wonder if maybe Luca's secretly a cat? Wait. All his friends are cats. That's true, we have a lot of cat friends. You can... Oh, wait, I don't have to cover my mouth for this one. <laughs> it can get awful cold out there in these woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Helps on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no! Do I seem like a killer to you? Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. Well, do I? Aw, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. Let's go see what we can steal, smash, or TBD. <laughs> Be challenged by? Yeah. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine Ooh. and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I, uh, came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. <laughs> Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Flaming chicken coop! <laughs> no, you didn't. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But, like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. <laughs> Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rollo got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. <laughs> so I buried him under that tree. 
But when I came back for them later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found them and tossed them. Iggy triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out, it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. <laughs> it was us. Dang. Unbelievable. It's wild that your whole house got rebuilt. Yeah, yeah. Including the secret hidden basement. With the yeah. secret hidden basement files. Yeah. Well, maybe those weren't there at that time. It seemed like they were ones that Walt had put away there. But maybe, maybe I'm so. wrong. Yeah, maybe like it could be that that bin was moved down there. Also, the it could have been a little basement that was a work area that wasn't at the time so secret and full of... Secrets? Like, and conspiracies and jam? It wasn't a, like a conspiracy room. It was just yeah. like a downstairs storage place with filing thought, cabinets. <laughs> I kind of figured it was like his downstairs home office. Yeah, like that, doctor, would, that would make some sense. medical files there and stuff. So that raises the question then, is the tiny little punching bag his or your fake grandma's? <laughs> I assumed it was his, even when we first saw it, because it was like his old office that she'd taken over. But You're probably right. I just like it being I the like fake it grandma's being grandma. more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who's in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. Oh boy. Let's make a mess of some sort. Can I go more play? Oh, I can. Ooh. Crooked. <laughs> Just like this whole stinking place. <gasps> Yay. New words. New words. For surviving old situations. Old situations. Wait, I don't. It, it, go to the coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Nope. I mm, just wanted to see if that would work. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not where the ah. coffee lives. They froze the steps to the coffee shop. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. I won't allow it. How did they rebuild the whole mansion? Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. That part does stretch belief a little bit. That's like, I'm fine stretching my belief. That's <laughs> just a... That's a real big step. <laughs> Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. Hmm. This is the source? It's a dang hole? <laughs> How do we smash a hole? <laughs> oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr, where's Rolo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drat, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source, where they collect the unrefined... Uh... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various... complications. Complications like us? You are a smart boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are just destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. 
Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is, we all play our part in life. Mine just happens to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras, ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Curse snapped his fingers. Scene change. Ah, dang. There, that's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. (laughs) Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? (laughs) Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I'm an exceptional liar. Bup, 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 that's far enough. Piggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool! Call off your goons. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can all head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Backing up. (laughs) Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. (sighs) It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. Well, I'd like this. With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Iggy! Holy heck! Well, that was fun. (laughs) Ooh. Whoa. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Iggy tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. You reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kara's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, then we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. (laughs) Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with (gasps) it. Long life? I'll have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Prum dum dum, property dum dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? Hum. <laughs> Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Kurt, just let go. No, can't do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. No, Iggy, just shed your coat. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no-good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no. Luca felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. 
Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Luca had no choice but to... What to Iggy's request? Refuse or accept... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Hmm. I don't like being put in this position. I don't think anyone's really happy with the position they're in at this exact moment. Well, what are you going to do? Hmm. What am I saying? We're going to do both of them sooner or later. Probably, yeah, but... Given how earnestly Iggy is asking, I'm sort of inclined to... Listen to him? To give Iggy what Iggy is uh, asking of us. I mean, it's not like he doesn't know what he's saying. Oh, yeah, no, he, he's made it very clear he knows exactly what he's saying and is... I don't like uh, it, though. Like, I don't like it either, and I think, like, nor do I think it would be uh, the wrong answer to refuse in, like, this specific situation, but... You want to try accept first, and then we'll come back after? I think so, yeah. I don't know. When a, char when a character wants to do a thing, even, even if it's a thing that I don't want... And especially if it's like a sacrifice type thing, I like letting them have that autonomy. Yeah. To make it. That's understandable. Yeah. I, yeah. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Yeah. Good. Hmm. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Yeah, I don't think this is going to go well. Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. Luca, you really should, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before perennial harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest li Tempest liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side project product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the hole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. We have some idea what that would look like. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. If you know all this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. 
Luca Van Horn. You are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> hmm. Revenge served cold. Second time's a charm? What? Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find could... something more definitive. No, I could... We could... There could be a sequel. I mean, I wouldn't mind a sequel. I mean, I wouldn't mind a sequel. But I we could mean... probably do a little better here. Yeah, but I mean... If there were a sequel, I wouldn't mind this dovetailing into its tree. True. We've got an option here, which is nice. Humming. And obviously refusing here as well. Mm-hmm. You know what? We'll figure that out next time. Thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you next week for more Beacon Pines. Don't worry, there'll be more. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.